this mission statement has actually three components, uh, starting from the end without frontiers. This is the main area of ARES activity because rail suffers in particular from the impact of fragmentation. We have national rules, we have national procedures, we have a very low modal share for cross-border rail transport. So by producing technical specifications for interoperability, by fulfilling our role as authorizing entity, we want to eliminate barriers. And then, of course, sustainability is uh, the other aspect where we push very hard to make sure that rail has the least environmentally uh, difficult and uh, least uh, emission-heavy transport mode gets its fair mobile share. Well, we are actively working, firstly, as the body that provides the recommendations for the technical specifications for interoperability, as the organization that drives the reduction of national rules. So, for instance, the technical rules for vehicle authorization, we have driven down from more than 14,500 in 2016, now to a mere 500. So, still, 500 national rules is 500 too many, but it has been a reduction by more than 90%. Secondly, with our role in authorization, where in particular for multi-country applications, we have locomotives that we authorize for operation in certain countries, we actively contributed it. So that is the without frontiers bit. Safety, we have a program to drive safety culture in addition to a monitoring role and there we can certainly attribute part of the improvement of the safety level in European railways since 2004 to the activities of the agency. And then finally sustainability, we are driving uh, green agenda by heavily promoting the environmental benefits of rail. So we are actively engaged to make our mission really become reality. Well, in my view, we are in the middle of the digital transformation. I wouldn't say that we have already achieved the transformation. We have certainly made a lot of progress. I'm referring to ERTMS ETCS, which we often call the backbone of uh, digitalization of rail. But there, we need to really go ahead with the deployment. So we have the system, we apply the system successfully, but it needs to be rolled out and the full rollout will only be achieved by 2040. I believe globally the digitalization can help to firstly make rail more efficient, but I believe the key aspect is to make it more customer friendly, to make it more simple for the passengers and for the freight users to actually use the rail services and this is a challenge that largely lies still ahead of us. Well, we are just coming from an event on uh, the challenges with workforce. We have uh, firstly the challenges in terms of demographics because the sector is losing skilled workers uh, because of their coming of age and we have the skills gap. We just spoke about the digital transformation. There are now different uh, job profiles asked for which are important to be available in the railway sector. Now we are fishing in the same pond as other sectors because digital skills are 
high demand in many other sectors. So we need to make rail an attractive employer. We need to make rail a diverse employer and we need to attract more women into rail. And we need to get better control of the negative image of rail because if rail is seen more as the environmentally friendly mode of transport where everyone can make a contribution to reduce the CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions in general, then I believe we can be an attractive uh, option for potential workers for the railway sector. Well, obviously mobility is a key aspect of economy and society. We need transport of people and goods, firstly to have at least our food supply, to have our waste disposed of and any social interaction needs the mobility of persons. The future of mobility will have to be a fully integrated multimodal transport system in which every mode of transport plays according to their respective strengths. And this would mean that over large distances both passengers and freight should best be transported by rail because by that we can take full profit of the good environmental properties of rail. And this fully integrated multimodal transport system will have to be supported by efficient digital tools in order to make it both effective and attractive for the customers. Well, for me, InnoTrans is mostly a networking exercise. So I'm very happy after a break, an involuntary break of four years, to be able to meet so many people again. We have all lived through the dire years with uh, Zoom and Teams meeting. Now I'm very happy again to meet people in person. And for me, this is one of the most important lessons. We need the human to human interaction in order to also move the railway sector forward. Thank you.